This is a film where we have a zombie outbreak, which is not especially relatable. Mm -hmm. But then we also have parent-child estrangement, which is super relatable. Yeah. As soon as you get over the one inch barrier at the bottom of your screen, your world is gonna be completely open to so much. What's really is making you think, who are you when the chips are down? Right. You know, who are you in the roughest of times? Is this who you want to be? Welcome to Cinema Therapy. I am Alan C. Wright, professional filmmaker, and I need therapy. And I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love movies. And today we have a special guest. This is Sophie Tejas, and you are the associate producer of the show. Huge fan of cinema. Genius slash great detective. Attention, everyone! Sophie Tejas is an amazing detective slash genius. So Sophie is usually the one who's behind the scenes. You, you all build us up and she keeps us humble and brings us down many, many notches every single shoot. Today's movie is Train to Busan, which a lot of you recommended for us. I had never, I, I really need to get more into South Korean cinema, I'm finding. Korean cinema is yes, freaking fantastic. But people suggested Train to Busan because there's a lot of heart and a lot of meaning to it. And what a film. I, it shouldn't leave you feeling the way that it does. Aroused? And it's like upsetting. <laughs> Hey, listen, Gong Yu is a good-looking man. <laughs> There's no shame in that. Listen. I just have a zombie thing. Why would you say that? Like, you put me in such an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> okay, that, yeah. that's different. Zombie movies in particular, I have a love-hate relationship with. The setup is there is a single dad who is taking his daughter uh, south to Busan to visit her mom for her birthday, um, gets on a train early in the morning, and all hell breaks loose. So his mother says, you missed your daughter's recital. And she videotaped it for him. She's so brilliant in this. It is depressing how it's good of an actor she is. This is like Haley Joel Osment in the Sixth Sense levels of it's really, child acting. really, really good. So she can't finish the song. This is a film where we have a zombie outbreak, which is not especially relatable. Mm -hmm. No. But then we also have parent-child estrangement, which is super relatable. Yeah. And, it, and it really explores, okay, during the hard times, are we gonna be selfish or are we gonna look out for each other? And right now, he's kind of been a selfish punk. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's been terrible. He's giving her a lecture instead of listening to her feelings. And we have such a seamless blend in the filmmaking of emotional, like, relationship beats and what is going on? Oh, this movie just, it veers wildly in tone back and forth and it never feels unearned. Like the, the filmmaking is so, so strong that it can do these two completely different things at the same time and it just, it nails it on every transition. In Western film in general, but specifically in horror, there's a lot of just slap you in the face with things. Uh -huh. You know, we a really rely on that. jump scare and stuff. Jump scare! <laughs> And this is just so subtle in the transition, and I, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. It builds a lot of dread. Yeah. Ugh, go, what was that for? Out my eyes. Trust me, I did us all a favor. Even your eyes are stinky. And now you smell fierce. What do I do? Yeah, That's thank you. Nice. Scentbird for sponsoring this episode. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with over 600 brands available, including top brands like Gucci and indie brands like The Harmonist. All right, let's take a look at what we got. I have Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce. Yep, Fierce. And I've got Dulce & Gabbana's Borome. I believe it's French, Poum. As I said, Borome. I've heard it both ways. I like that I get uh, some citrus and some lavender, 
And that 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And I like that I get hints of sandalwood and that everything we say apparently is a movie quote. I also like that each one of these is a 30 day supply, so I'm gonna be smelling good for a while, guys. You can choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $16 and it's flexible. So you can skip months with no penalties or upgrade to get two or three. They also have a quiz that you can take online to find out what your scent profile is. I took it and now I wanna try Rag and Bone Oddity because it's spicy and sweet. Como just like yo. him. <laughs> and I wanna try Tommy Bahama Maritime Deep Blue because I love the ocean, and who doesn't want to smell like a sailboat? I'm sailing! I'm sailing! If you click the link below and use our code, you'll get 55% off, so it's only $7 for your first month. Scentbird, smell like an eagle, pay like a pigeon. This is your new tagline, you have to use it forever, TM and copyright me. So Sophie, you mentioned in your notes, tell me about Cassandra. Cassandra, so the homeless man who doesn't have a name, he is called the homeless He's man. He's the homeless man, yeah. Um, he is what we would call the Cassandra metaphor, which is Cassandra is from Greek myth. Uh, her father was a king of Troy and she, what's his name? Uh, Apollo fell in love with her and she rejected his advances. Uh, but before that, he gave her the the gift of prophecy. Um, and so when she rejected him, he made it so no one would ever believe what she said, even though what she says is true. Um, and so that's kind of what the homeless man portrays in this. Uh, it's also the Shakespearean trope, the fool, right? Uh, which is also, you see that in uh, Us, the son, that's what he is. Um, so yeah, I really like how they utilize that in this because the homeless man, it's, it's, a, it's a person that you wouldn't listen to. Right. You know, you wouldn't believe them. Um, I like that juxtaposition. But uh, he's the one who knows everything. But he's the one who knows from yeah. the beginning. Yep. Um, but no one believes him because he's this homeless guy and he's crazy and, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, right, right before that, a girl stumbles onto the train and she's obviously been bitten. But he's got a pregnant wife in there. This guy, by the way, my favorite character in the film. This is Song Hwa. I probably said that so wrong, Song Hwa. Um, I would rush into battle brandishing a spoon for this man. <laughs> he is everything to me. Um, He's everything I want to be, honestly. Burly. That's fair. Korean. Yeah, he is the perfect build. Putting that out there. <laughs> this is like Poseidon Adventure. Like you, you establish all the characters like, this is the total it's, disaster movie. You get all the characters out in the beginning and you know who they are, and then all hell breaks loose. Or, you know, your oh, classic gosh. classic murder mystery. Yeah. 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 And this, where she... I mean, that's a big sound effect thing, but also, that's uncomfortable with your neck. Yeah. Well, the thing that I like about... So, in, in general, with, like, horror movies, there's the group, you know, that yeah. you follow, and they've established who a lot of those people are. But I've found... I watch a lot of Korean TV. I just really find that I like the way that they do B plots and you know, I, I just, I don't know. I enjoy the way that they follow it. I think they do it very well. It's, and they do it very well in this, but unfortunately we can't follow all of them because there's so many. There's there's too many for us to follow in this yeah. episode. But uh, yeah, watch the film, it's great. For those of you who have, you know, started to maybe get a little bit of experience from uh, with Korean cinema from um, Parasite Squid and Squid Game. And Dive into Korean cinema, because there is so is. much good stuff. Uh, everything Bong Joon-ho has done is a freaking masterpiece. Snowpiercer. Uh, yeah, but there's there's a lot of great stuff. And I, I agree with what you're saying, sort of the way B characters and ensembles are tracked. It's, it's a different style, and it's very subtle the way it's different, but I agree, it's, there's, Something special. Well, there. every character is a character. I mean, yeah. they're not. They're all well-rounded. Yeah, they're not yeah. just archetypes. Yeah, there's no throwaways. One of well, my favorite. Well, I mean, the businessman is kind of a, a stock arch yes. villain. Guy, yeah, but uh... he's he's kind of like a foil. I feel like to uh, Gong Yu's character. Yeah. Because Gong Yu, I one of the reasons they start I love in almost movie, the exact same place. Yeah, they do. They're both completely. Self-absorbed self Self-absorbed, yeah, they don't care about anyone. And they're all about the money, and they're yeah. all about the success. And, and then one has an incredible character arc, which is yeah. one of the many reasons I love this movie, because it's so strong, Yeah. and one of them doesn't. Um, but one of my one of my favorite quotes uh, from Bong Joon-ho was at the Oscars when he was absolutely sweeping the floor. 
Um, he said, 자막, 서브타이틀의 장벽을 장벽도 아니죠. 한 1인치 정도 되는 그 장벽을 뛰어넘으면 여러분들이 훨씬 더 많은 영화를 즐길 수 있습니다. Once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. <laughs> and it's so true. There's, there's just a way that South Korea is doing storytelling and movies that mm. is, I mean, it's, it's nothing you've ever seen, you know? And it's just completely, it has new life breathed into it. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's nice and it's refreshing. So this is, so he closed the door and was gonna, gonna lock out a man and his pregnant wife to protect himself and, you know, ostensibly everybody else, but really protect himself Mostly and his himself, daughter. Yeah. Well, and he doesn't open the door until she says, I know them. You until know, his like, daughter like, says, I know them, yeah. Yeah, let them. But this is like Jurassic Park. We're safe unless they figure out how to open doors. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to say, um, one of the stressful things about zombie movies is you knowing, you know, shoot them in the head, you know, all this stuff. To, this is the most competent I have ever seen people in a horror setting. Yeah. They, they you know, learn, they are immediately they the figuring really out. Quickly. They learn yeah. it so fast. And I have a competency kink. Yeah. And man, that was just completely <laughs> satisfied by this movie. So Gong Yu being competent is also a very that. special feeling for you? Listen. <laughs> I love that it's the pregnant wife who grabs the water bottle and does the newspaper thing. Yep. Like, She's and in mom mode. She's in total mom mode. But I love we have the setup right here. You talk about the parallel arcs between Gong Yu's character and the businessman. Right here we see, yeah, he's a selfish prick. Yep. Yeah. He would let a pregnant woman and her husband just die because there's time for them to get in, but yeah, he doesn't no, want to risk it. You know? Risk it for the biscuit. That didn't work. No, that nope. didn't, sure didn't, didn't work. Sure didn't. Didn't. We're going to cut that. It exists. I don't think we should, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of my charm. <laughs> It is true. Suana, Suana, man, I need you to do it. Tell me. Don't use it. Just let each other do it. My dad's not in the room. Oh my gosh, she's so heartbreaking. That's why my dad is in the room. Oh man. Okay, so I just want to speak quickly on that. Um, and we let it roll. I mean, yeah. this is going to be terrifying here in a second. But uh, Man's Search for Meaning, the idea is that those who only look out for themselves in the concentration camps were the ones who absolutely did not make it. Right. That the selfish survivalists didn't stand a chance. And those who looked out for each other, sure, a lot of them died, but the ones who survived is because they were part of a community of looking out for one another. And that, to me, is like, that's what this whole movie's about. That and brains. Actually, they don't really eat brains. No. This isn't a brain. They just bite each other. Oh, good. There's the military. They're going to save us. And again, these zombies are not super gory zombies, but they're just terrifying. And I, most of it's down to the way they're performed. It's I mean, the, the makeup is good. But the twitchy. Song again, being the Thank ideal man. Job. Yep. But yeah, no, I agree. It's the. The body, the, uh, so, yeah. Well, they're so feral. A, yeah, they're just feral. There's a fantastic shot coming up here. I mean, these zombies, they're, they're just absolutely ferocious. They're yeah. not, they're kind of slow and lumbering until they see people, and then they just go and then they're berserk. Full yeah. turbo. Okay, so this zombie in the background, there's little frame jumps. Yeah. And they don't do a ton of them. In that whole shot, there are six or seven frame jumps, but they're just at the right place, and they're they're very specifically timed to make each movement look extra jerky, and it just makes them seem inhuman. And uh, they had to time them really closely because there's one human character and one zombie character, and you don't want the human to look jerky and weird. Boom! Uh, so <laughs> satisfying every oh. time. You know how we talk about in How to Train Your Dragon how Stoic actually just waits and starts punching dragons? <laughs> this is this is live action Stoic. <laughs> He's just like a zombie, just like I'm gonna elbow it, I'm gonna punch it. A little Jason Bourne move here. Oop. Yep, competence, right? <laughs> just like I understand how zombies work. So I'm gonna block the teeth. Now he has a chance here. He could do the same thing that that Gong Yu did earlier. Right? And to him. Which is what I love, because he's, he's gonna start, you know, gaining more empathy, but 
these are people who saw his face when he shut the door on them. That's the homeless man who he was gonna he was, turn he was, away. Yeah. And yet they save his daughter and get her to safety, and he comes in and he you know covers up the. I love that, he's, I love that when he's rescuing him, he calls him asshole. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, but like everyone else is showing extreme empathy the whole time, yeah. even when he is a complete ass to them. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, I just think that speaks volumes. Hate just breeds hate. Yeah. You know, and revenge just breeds revenge and the cycle just goes on and on and on. And uh, this film, yeah, it's about zombies and it's about horror, but what really is making you think, who are you when the chips are down? Right. You know, who are you in the roughest of times? And. I, this is the question my wife asks our kids because I, I sometimes, sadly, and I should know better because I'm the therapist, but like it's just, I guess it's just in my DNA. I'll jump into lecture mode sometimes uh -huh. and my wife will just gently consent to touch. Is this okay? She'll yeah. put her hand on me like this and I'll stop and then she'll just look at my, my kid and she'll be like, is this who you want to be? Like whatever behavior they were doing, she'll say, is this who you want to be or who do you want to be? That's the only question she asks them. And they always go, no. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so triggered right now. <laughs> Fight or flight. One thing I do love about the whole philosophy of loving your enemy or, or doing good to people who do bad to you, mm -hmm. it doesn't always change hearts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does. It shows that you won't be changed. But what I love is if, it, if hearts are going to change, that's how. That's the only way to do it, yeah. People don't change from being scolded. So I don't know why we always do it. <laughs> I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. All his friends. Yeah, his friends. so we didn't we didn't get to see this earlier, but there's a team of baseball players. Um, and he's the last one, him and a girl who is just like, no, well, she likes him and he hasn't, you know. They have a whole dystopian, you know, YA subplot going. But what I love about this is they've just fought their way through one Car at time. And, and he was. And he was. He was yeah, yeah he was he great. Was. I mean, he's a baseball player. But they get here and he sees his friends and he stops. And I love this because both of them, neither of them go. Why are you? Why aren't you fighting? They push him aside and they go through and they start. And never does it come up again. Yeah. Never do they say. What the hell is wrong with you? There, you know. Yeah. They, they just understand. Through. It's it's that is when you really I think start to see Gongyu's character start to empathize and yeah. he realized this is hard. Sure. And also you're so young and yeah. here's all of your friends and they're not, they're monsters now. And it's, I just really love it. I love this little Jurassic Park thing. Well, they, in this case they can't see in the dark so it's not Jurassic Park, but the. But again, it's, it's competence in the face of horror where they figure a thing out and they're like, oh, we will immediately use this as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And hats off to Koreans. This is something we can learn from them. Like, you don't need to portray your countrymen like idiots. In American movies, there's like one hero and everyone else is dumb. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, in this, everyone's at least borderline competent. Yeah. Even the bad guy is fairly competent. <laughs> <clears throat> also, the baseball player is in Parasite. He's the son. Oh, is he? The is son. he the, the yeah. son? Okay. I still haven't seen it. I really, I feel terrible that I haven't seen it yet. Movie night. Oh man. I love that they wrap up their arms so they don't get bitten and they can just like, <laughs> what? Competency kink. As soon as they did that, I was like, you know, it made me so excited. Cause that was always my, growing up, I was like, you just wrap your just arms wrap and like, your arms and duct tape, but like, you ah! Because this is my, that. I made this, I didn't make this movie, I could never, but. <laughs> when you say competency kink, so I've gone my entire psychological career thinking Freud was full of crap, not everything ties back to sex, and then I met Sophie, and I'm like, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, they're duct taping the arms. I don't have anything to do. That's <laughs> <laughs> How did they know? Yeah, no, uh, no comment. <laughs> mom, don't watch this. Don't worry, my mom won't watch it either. And my mom's dead! Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just I I can play that card anytime and just bring everything to a halt. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, next clip. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been bitten. Take my pregnant wife and look after her. Because he knows he's only got a short amount of time before it changes. Well, then he's the one keeping that close so they can get out. 
어? 내가 막게. 가. 아니 가. And you're right. They're totally bros now because they killed zombies together. The tension is palpable. Uh huh. Stop. <laughs> Yanni. Because they hadn't picked one yet. And here these people aren't... The rich guy is not letting them in because he's afraid they might be infected, which they're not. Yeah, so they've been fighting their way up to that car because his daughter and that guy's friend yeah, and it's the safe carts where all the non-infected people are, and the rich tycoon is leading the charge to not let not let them in, because he's like, there's no way they passed through all those cars without getting infected. And had it not been for him, dude wouldn't have been bitten. Like we just hate this guy at this point. All because the people in this car were too afraid to help their neighbor, essentially. The exact same thing, like two hours ago, held the door closed and wouldn't let people in and then changed his mind. But this is man's search for meaning. What happens when we let fear rob us of our morality? You know, we start looking out only for ourselves. We lose who we are. 지금 저쪽에서 오신 분들 아무래도 저희랑 함께 있을 수 없을 것 같습니다. 전부 저쪽 연결부로 이동해 주세요. And this can happen during COVID, it can happen during times of violence, times of economic downturn, like all sorts of things where... I know it's cliche to be like, we should all just band together, but it really is a truth of life. Truth, yeah. yeah. And the panic sets in. Just such a deep movie. Yeah, so I chose this scene because, first, you need to teach us how to live in a world without Songwa. How do we rebuild from here? Um, <laughs> we then don't give up We now. don't. We don't. That's it. It's We've lost goals. the perfect man. That's we it. We have. We have. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, the mob mentality. Mm-hmm. Away! 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 Also, the, the rich guy, I'm never going to remember his name. His reaction, I find his reaction very interesting when he says, you could have saved them. Mm -hmm. And he immediately gets defensive. You know, he's, he's faced with this thing that he's done. It's, it's an ego-driven behavior. And it's the behavior of many narcissists of, I can't have my, my integrity, my goodness, my superiority challenged. And rather than look inward, I'm going to push it back on somebody else, right? And it's not just narcissists, it's... Oh, that's human nature. It's I think human nature. Are just it's just dialed like up. The, the, the maximum yeah. version of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And mom mentality, what's that line from uh, Men in Black? A person is smart, people are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. Mom mentality, sometimes it comes from wanting change and going... I mean, we've seen... We've seen a lot of things where people want change and they've gone through as many peaceful channels as they can go through and it's not happening, they're being ignored and so it turns into a mom mentality and then they get judged for it. Yeah, what, like riots are the, the last, what is yeah. that quote? I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. So there's that type of mom mentality, but that's not what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is fear. What we're seeing here is fear of the other, fear for my own safety. Sure turning on one another. So he's talking to his assistant. 
넌 어디야? 거긴 괜찮아? 부산은 초기 방어에 성공했대요. 어? It's actually wild that his assistant is still answering his phone. 어? 팀장님. You just hide up in a building. <laughs> also, you've never worked for a guy like this, have you? That's extreme. <laughs> He's looking for absolution that they invested in this company that unleashed the outbreak. 김대리, 그거 김대리 잘못 아니다. This is such a great piece of acting from Gong Yu. 고마워요. 김대리. 我也是喜欢这个片子，因为他，首先，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他，他
It's my fault because I wanted to go to Busan to be with mom. So we got on the train. Not only is she an incredible actress yeah. for being what, like eight in this maybe? Yeah, seven or eight years old. I've never seen, he has never given just a heartbreaking, he's never not given me a heartbreaking performance. Yeah. If you've seen Goblin, destroys me every time. He just, he never misses the mark for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of context. You could watch this scene and think, like, this is really big, over the top acting, but at the end of this film. <laughs> Feel like it. And that's the other thing that I like about Korean cinema is I see men openly weeping so often, more more often than not, and that's you don't see that a lot in you know American film. He is dying because he's being replaced, and so these are literally his last thoughts. This shot is so beautiful. Also, can we talk about the score for this movie? And I love that these two become like a surrogate parent and child because one lost her dad, one lost her husband. In, in The Dark Knight, Joker, who is, you know, an awful person, but he speaks a lot of truth. You see, in their last moments, people show you who they really are. And one thing that I'm discovering with, uh, as I'm getting into horror as I'm older, you look at Frankenstein and the universal monsters and they all had, they all explored truths and meaning, but I think the, the real power of horror is we grapple with our own mortality yeah. and we grapple with our legacy. And horror makes us face the things, not just that we're afraid of, but just the fact that we're all, we're, like my wife likes to say, none of us is gonna make it out alive. Yeah. Uh... We finished watching this and our producer told me I shouldn't feel this sad at the end of a horror movie or at, uh, at the end of a zombie movie, is what she said. Mm -hmm. Man, it's just gut-wrenching. I mean, the, the filmmaking is spot on. Direction, editing, lighting, the stunt performers, the acting is absolutely phenomenal throughout. After all the spectacle and all of the horror and all of the things that happen to have our emotional climax of the film, because we do have, you know, one scene after that, but the emotional climax of the film to be just two actors in close-up, just just losing it, and then one actor remembering uh, in close-up with zombie makeup, and he still sells an emotion. <laughs> it's just, it's beautiful acting, it's beautiful filmmaking. Well, and it's if it's done poorly, this is the moment of the movie that will lose you and you'll start getting It completely falls it. apart and you yeah. start, yeah, you crack up. And not the case. The train stops and they get out. And that's the first time, again, that you see dead zombies. Um, but they're walking through this tunnel and they can't tell if they're dead or alive, so they've been ordered to, to shoot them and kill them. This is a song from school. She couldn't finish it before because her father wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And she was singing it for him. 
So to me, it's powerful because she's still singing it for him, but it's in his memory. Yeah. And symbolically, like she can't go on without him, yeah. you know, because she, she can sing the song even though he's not there. We call that a planting and a callback. <laughs> What I also love is the the pregnant woman is a reverse Chekhov's gun. So with a Chekhov's gun, especially if, if a pregnant woman is introduced into a movie, she's going to have the baby by the end of the movie, which is not a favorite thing of mine because that's just kind of a different level of body horror for me, you know? But the movie ends and she's still pregnant. Still pregnant. Yeah. We choose who we want to be no matter what's going on. Our circumstances don't dictate who we are. We, our choices d dictate who we are and we determine how we're going to respond to things. Yeah. And we see throughout this entire film, happiness is selflessness. Yeah. And we have two characters, both rich men, both businessmen, both selfish, both self-centered, both survivalists. One dies at peace. One dies in miserable agony, right? We're all gonna die. None of us is going to make it out alive. So what's your legacy? How do you touch the lives around you? Also, it's just a kick-ass movie. Like, it's intense. That's probably probably the best film of 2016. Mm. Straight up. My takeaway is eat the rich. <laughs> <laughs> you dig what we're doing? Like, subscribe, click the bell so you get notified every week and you don't miss a video. That's a good, that's good advice. I, I do that. Find me on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Want a new What's job? It? Give me a new job. <laughs> I don't use TikTok. If you okay. find my Twitter, no, you didn't. Um, <laughs> I'm on Instagram, my personal account, so Sophie. Instagram. Tarzella draws them on Etsy. Scentbird, click the link below for 55% off, so it's only $7 your first month. Scent fight. Scent fight. Oh, gosh. Oh, 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 take that. Oh, it smells so Italian. strongly. So until next time. Aloha oi. Aloha oi. And, and watch, watch movies, movies, I guess. <laughs>